All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over this great email that was sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy. He is uh, 52 years old. He's from over in the UK, and he shares his story how he ended up giving his wife the boot after she was dumb enough to bring up an open marriage. You're going to see that this guy truly handled this situation like a boss. You guys are going to be very proud of how this guy did this. No nonsense. And now he, this all happened about a year ago, and now he's doing well and her not so well. And you're going to see in this story, guys, they were married for like 26 years. Uh, have two kids together. Both the kids are in their 20s, a grandchild on the way. He always worked full time. She was a, she was a stay-at-home mom. He really thought they had a great marriage. He really did. They would have SCX regularly. Things were good. And then a different chain of events changed everything. And this guy was like, we're done. I'm, I'm out of here. Or like more like you're out of here. And that's that. Because he was smart enough to know darn well that these things don't work. And wait till you see the tactics she takes to try to get this, to plant the seeds of an open marriage in his head. Classic manipulation. But this guy is not dumb. And this guy connected the dots and handled it quite well. So, starts off, says here, uh, hi SSM. I've listened to some of your stories on your channel and thought I would, I would vent my story with you and your listeners. I am uh, 52 years old. My wife is 48. And I will say, uh, Trevor, I'm, I'm Trevor and my wife's stuff. Some background, we've been married for 26 years and have two children, a son who's 24 and a daughter 21. We have our own home, fully paid for, and a comfy life in general. Okay, so why screw it up? Well, the wife obviously thought it was okay to do so. We've always got along very well and I can count on, on one hand how many fights we've had and disagreements. Both our son and daughter have moved out, and our son is married with his first with our first grandchild on the way. Congratulations, Grandpa. Our daughter lives with her boyfriend and is also happy, but has no plans to marry that we know of. I'm still working about uh, 10 hours a day, including traveling, and my wife has always been a stay-at-home mom. About six months ago, the wife was wondering about helping out a local charity outlet as she claimed she was feeling alone during the day and wanted something to use her spare time on as housework was, was, was soon done those days. So she asked me what I thought about helping out at a local charity for people who are struggling to make ends meet at a local food bank charity. So I was thinking, okay, all right, kids are out of the house, you're getting kind of bored, all right, what could go wrong? I thought it was a great idea, and she applied to, applied to help out. And of course, any unpaid help is a great use there. She started doing two days, two days, six hours a day, uh, two days a week, six hours weekly. She said she enjoyed meeting the people who came in and her fellow workers. All went very well, and she enjoyed it, telling me every day about the mothers and children who came in and their struggles to make ends meet. About two months in, she said she wanted to take on another day, so now three days a week. She was still full of the story of co-workers and people coming into the food bank for help. Three other women worked there along with this guy we will call Tom, who was the van driver, who collected the food from local supermarkets with a sell-by dates that ran out that day. So he's like, okay, she's, she's feeling fulfilled and she's helping people out because the kids are out of the house so she can now embrace the nurturing side, helping other people. What could go wrong? Uh, over conversations about her day, she would tell me how hard this Tom worked and how she would help him unload and load the van for deliveries. She said he was a funny guy and made her laugh. I was pleased she was enjoying her three days and having some fun at her food bank. So, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware, often, and I'm using the word often, when a woman starts suddenly talking about some other guy, there's something up there. Okay, this is why women go fucking bananas if you talk about another woman. You can mention your secretary who weighs 450 pounds and you talk about her more than more than once and all of a sudden she thinks you want to fuck her when you wouldn't touch a 450 pound woman for all the money in the world. That, that's just the mindset. So when they're talking about other dudes extensively, got to pay attention to that. So uh, three months in, she tells tells me some of her day her daily interactions, but less than she used to used to. It was in this third month that our bedroom life started to decline, uh, started stating that she was tired from her day's work, etc. I said, "Well, if it's making you tired, you better cut back to two days, or consider even one day a week." To which she said, "No," as she enjoyed it and would miss the people who come in, and she has made friends with her coworkers. So she's not talking about her days as much. 
the bedroom action slowing down. It's so like, hey, I work 10 hours a day. You never had to work a day in your life. You're doing this charity thing. Oh, you're going to take care of me in the bedroom, wifey. Oh, yes. And if you can't, you're tired all the time. Well, make some adjustments. And of course, she's making her excuses. Uh, strangely, the next night we had intimacy, but I could tell it was different and it was like she wanted to get it over as quickly as possible, as if their passion was missing, like a half hard effort to use to our usual lovemaking. I did make a mental note of this behavior and put it down to her feeling tired and most likely trying to appease my comments of her cutting back on her days. So, interesting timing there. Suddenly he brings it up and then she hooks up with him, but he can tell it's half-assed. Uh, this kind of carried on for the next month, and I said to her, Look, this newfound charity was affecting our love life, and you no longer seemed like you enjoyed lovemaking, and was more like a chore to keep me happy. She denied it, of course, and claimed that she wasn't feeling that great, and was feeling menopausal, and would con contact the doctor for some HRT advice. Now, he said she's 48. Is it possible? Could this be the issue? Possible. But this doesn't seem likely, given all the other things when you connect the dots. So now five months into her charity work and she says one of her, the women who helped out there was leaving as she has a sick mother who needed her attention and she'd be doing an extra day until they found someone else to replace her. Uh-uh, not happening. You've already been five months now. We're not hooking up as much and you're very unenthused about being around me. You're not taking on another day. I was disappointed with this extra day as I felt she already did more days than anyone else other than Tom who was actually paid for his efforts. When I said to her I thought it was too much, she said she couldn't let the charity down as she had already said that she would cover the extra day. I'd be like, you're not going to let the charity down. There's always people that volunteer. And besides, you didn't check with me. So, no. Uh, by this time, I was starting to feel this charity work was getting between us. So five months into this, and now four days a week, I was feeling detached from her as she no longer spoke much about it. And she was just off at home, not her old self. Mind, el mind you else mind elsewhere you might say her mind was elsewhere you might say a few of the words were misspelled here at the weekend i was planning a trip to the local uh, garbage dump garbage dump to dispose of some old stuff i removed from the garage and stated i might have to do two trips she said she would ask tom if he could, could drop it off as he has a van i asked if tom lived far away as i didn't want him to be driving far to get our junk she replied he lived at the road where the convenience store was, about a mile from the charity shop. I'd used that store myself in the past for things. I thought, great, that'd be useful if Tom could use his van, and when Tom agreed, I was grateful. So this guy is not too suspicious yet. He's given this Tom character the benefit of the doubt, as you can hear here. But as you guys probably can connect with us, this Tom guy is going to play a role in this whole story. Yes, spoiler alert, but it was a pretty obvious spoiler. We arranged the day my wife wasn't at the charity shop and she would be home to help and direct Tom to pile up to the pile that I had in the back of the, yard, of the yard. What I should explain here is I have two cameras, one looking down the driveway that looks past the front porch and another covering the backyard. Both motion, most motion detection cameras with audio that record any motion and sound. Okay, so he has surveillance at his house. Very smart. You'd think she would know this. Sure enough, on the day that Tom shows up, my wife helps him load the van with, and with what, which, what she can carry. They stop and have a quick conversation on the porch and uh, after loading the van, and she offers him a cup of coffee. He didn't enter the house. They chatted on the doorstep right under the camera. At this point, I didn't even watch the footage or listen to it. When I got home, the wife said that Tom had, had been here and picked up what needed to go. I said, great, that saves me some hours of my weekend. We are now in the six months of a charity shop, and she's still doing four days a week. Should have laid down the law, my man. It's Saturday night, and we are sitting in our lounge watching one of those reality TV shows where couples are gathered in a house with each other trying to make relationships. I find it so pathetic to watch and ask why are we watching such drivel, and the wife says that she, she was told it was interesting in modern times. These shows are garbage, but women can't get enough of them. Overwhelmingly, the people that watch it are women. I've known some guys that watch these stupid-ass shows and gossip about it, but they are kind of feminine guys. We have never watched such shows in the past. I want to emphasize this, guys. They never watched this stuff before. These couples are all in their early 20s and getting off with each other. 
One couple started talking about an open relationship and how it worked for them. Another couple who were in that group said they knew a couple that, that tried it and it failed for them and, and they parted ways. It all seemed like a load of BS to me, but the wife was interested, so we kept watching. So does anybody else find it interesting that all of a sudden she wants to watch this show with her husband? There's no coincidences. Seeds are being planted. Translation, manipulation, manipulation, manipulation. When it was over, she said these modern couples seem much more open than we were in our day, to which I said, yes, they, are all, they all seem doomed to failure and laugh. The wife gave me a strange look after me laughing. Right. If you search online, how many stories have I done? These things are a disaster. Open marriages, open relationships do not work. They only work if both parties enter in such a thing and are into that lifestyle, not when people have been married for a long time or in a relationship for a long time and somebody brings it up. They all are doomed to fail. We then switched to a film, and when that finished, we went to bed. While in bed, she said she found a couple's program interesting, and she found it liberating that they were so open with each other. Ah, so she's continuing on talking about this dumbass show. She then said, if we were in a position, how would I feel about, wait for it, an open relationship? What a coincidence that she just happened to be watching that show with me, and now she's talking about, and asked me, hypothetically, if we were, what would you think? Get out. I can see what's going on here. I laughed and said I would never agree to that as it's a recipe for disaster and failed relationships also stating that if I was asked, such for, asked for such a thing, it would mean the end of any relationship if I was married or not. Hear that? Making abundantly clear. Now, she isn't asking him for an open relationship. She's just, you know, what would you, what would you say in the hypothetical situation? But let's be honest, she's asking about it. He's letting it slide a little bit right now. She huffed a bit, but then we went to sleep. The next day was a Sunday, and I, and I spent some time on my computer, and I was about to shut down and thought about what she had said that night before. So I did some research online and found plenty of YouTube and Reddit stories on the subject of marriages and cheating, along with the red flags associated with it. This is probably when you found my channel, my man. Uh, after reading all this content, I was beginning to get a bit suspicious as to why my wife, after all these years, was so interested in the new show that we had watched the night before. Again, about to shut the computer off and then thought about my camera and audio recorded when Tom picked up our junk for the tip. I then reviewed the footage and can clearly hear them talking. Most just some chit chat, but then came the part when Tom, who looked about 30, was telling my wife about the show and how good it was how new couples are so open about relationships, mentioning open marriages, and how these days it's common, and he has such a and he has such a relationship with his girlfriend. Good old Tom, huh? And he's looking to have that relationship with it with a cougar, your wife. How he felt like it gave them a stronger bond and more interesting sex life, learning new things to excite each other, etc. After listening to this, and my wife saying that she was going to watch the TV show with lots of giggling and laughing, and the suggested remarks made by Tom. I had a feeling at, at what she was hinting at after we went to bed that evening talking about the show and liberated couples. Obviously. After this, I started to do some digging on Tom. I knew his rough address and had a few drive-bys locating his van in the driveway. On one such drive-by during the day, I saw his girlfriend with children come out of the driveway and walk out to the local convenience store. I parked up and followed her inside, and while she was picking something from the shelf, I accidentally on purpose bumped into her, saying I was sorry and apologizing for doing so. I remarked on all this food and the dates that were close to ending, and I expected to be at the charity food bank where my wife worked soon. She then asked where my wife worked, and I told her. She then said that her boyfriend worked there, and my wife must know him as he is a van driver. What a coincidence. I said, Tom, yes, my wife mentions him and that he is a funny guy and makes her laugh. I also mentioned that he's been to my house to pick up some junk for my wife and I from the backyard in his van. She says, yes, he can be funny, but he's also a flirt, to which I said, really, but, the, but why when you have children at a home to keep? She says uh, that she has caught him out before and we nearly broke up one time, but I forgave him for the kids. How interesting, because according to this dude's wife, they have an open relationship. Or at least according to Tom, they have an open relationship. But she's saying she almost broke up with him because of cheating. 
I don't think they're in an open relationship. Tom's just saying that to get in the panties of his cougar. I said he should be proud of his family and cherish what he has. After that, we said goodbye, and I wished her well and her children. This also told me that he has an open relationship if his girlfriend nearly left him. Uh, well, I wasn't going to hang around and wait for an affair to start. My wife had already said she liked this Tom and how he was funny and made her laugh, plus the suggestive sexual remarks that he had made in the video. So I went into the house and I sat at the kitchen table feeling quite angry. My wife came in and said that, would I like a coffee? I said, sure, and I wanted to talk. She sat opposite of me and said, what's wrong? I said, do you want an open marriage? She looked at me strangely, kind of shocked and blushed and said, what kind of question is that? Oh, for crying out loud, this is the woman that had you watching that dumbass show and brings it up in bed, I might add, amongst many other things. And now she's saying, what kind of question is that? God almighty. I said, when Tom came over to pick up the junk from the yard, you made him a cup of coffee and sat on the porch chatting. And funny how he convinced you to watch that program on couples and open relationships and a suggestive sexual remarks on how it made bedroom life more interesting. Also telling you he was in an open relationship with his girl, which you, which you left out when I asked you how it went with Tom and he picked up the junk from the yard. Also failing to tell me that he had told you that he was in an open relationship with his girlfriend. You told me it was such, it was just a quick chat when, in fact, you were talking more like 45 minutes. I listened to it all, I told her. What an idiot. She has to know he has surveillance cameras on, on the property and he can hear. Uh, unless she doesn't. I don't know. <coughs> I then said that I had spoken to his girl, which my wife had never met before, and told my wife what she told me and how she nearly left him for cheating in the past, so this open relationship he says he has is not true. So, anybody else waiting for the waterworks and the dramas and, well, you'll get your wish. My wife sat with an open mouth. Well, she wanted to have an open mouth for Tom. I then repeated my question. So, all this wanting to see the show and talk about open marriages with me wasn't filled with some desire to open our marriage so you could sleep with Tom and come home to your safe haven after them. I could see by her face as it went bright red with a blush and a slight shaking of her hands that she had thought about it, plus the tears in her eyes gave it away. Of course, the waterworks. As I stated, I would never be interested maybe in the, I would never be interested, maybe an affair wouldn't be far behind. She was quiet, but then said, I have not done anything outside our marriage. It doesn't matter, you're setting the stage. And like like he should really believe you. I said, no, not yet. You haven't, you haven't but the mention of open marriages and that stupid TV show you were in your own way getting me to watch so you could see what I might think about such an idea. You obviously fancy this Tom character and was starting to fare in the future if I didn't go for this open relationship crap. It'd only be a matter of time, and I said to her bluntly, dude, you're the, you're, you're the boss. Awesome, man. Good, you're, getting, you're not ditching around right to the point. Connected the dots. I mean, it doesn't take a fucking genius to see this, but he, he watched a lot of YouTube videos and read a lot of Reddit stories. There are, as you guys are aware, patterns to this. She sat there quietly trying to take it all in, and I said, So two months ago, so two months, and no one volunteers for the extra day at the charity shop that you took on. The lifeless bedroom life in the last three months, and the fact that you couldn't wait for it to be over with no passion, which we used to have, means you still love me and desire me. These are all questions. Have you ever thought that I would ever go for some open relationship crap is beyond me, and although you not, haven't done anything yet, so you say now means nothing to me, as I no longer trust you at all. You never told me of, of your conversation with Tom on the porch or any conversation from work lately. All, secret are, all secrets are, are all these things these days. Emotionally, you left this marriage with Tom, but, but thought I wouldn't notice some. Huh? She started crying and saying nothing happened and that she does love me, etc., etc. More from Chapter 5 of the Hobag Handbook. I said, yes, you love trying to fool me, and I, and I were not to take the stand. I have no doubt that he'd be on top of you soon. She burst out crying that she loved me. B.S. I said, no, you stopped loving me months ago as our bedroom life showed. So now you can have Tom or any guy that you want as I want a divorce. Yes. High five, brother. Yes, she, she's checked out of the marriage. End of story. Yes, I mean, 
you don't know. For me, for all we know, they could have been hooking up. Banging in the back room, I don't know. But for some reason, I don't think they have as of yet. And you're darn right they would have. So, he's done. End of story. You bring it up. Slow down in the bedroom. You're falling for some other guy and his bullshit. We're done. And from now on, you better find a paying job as I no longer would support you. I also said, you know Tom's girlfriend looks like a nice woman with children and you're considering destroying her family as well as your own for some chit-chat and desire with sexual suggestive remarks, which you should have drawn the line at and would have told me if you were not interested in Tom and all for an open marriage or affair. Tom will most likely destroy his relationship anyway, if not you, with some other woman who laughs at his jokes and falls for this open relationship sexy crap. He says, by the way, our son and daughter are coming over tonight, and I expect to be shown the 20-week week, 20 week scan of our granddaughter, and you can explain why we are getting divorced, and you better be honest about everything, as I had that recording of you and Tom talking about open marriages, being suggested, and you giggling, etc. You're giggling and laughing on the porch about it like a silly schoolgirl. Man, this guy, we're talking no mercy here. We're, this is some Cobra Kai shit. Sensei Kreese would be proud. God damn it, you're going to tell the kids you're not going to leave anything out, woman. She burst out crying, saying she didn't want a divorce, and she feels stupid for developing feelings for Tom. She was flattered he found her desirable, and she felt young again and was fooled by him. Lady, you're 48 years old. You know what you're fucking doing here. Come on here. I believe, I actually believe the part that she, it, it felt nice for her to be noticed and validated. What I tell you about attention and validation, it never stops. She went on and on. I said, yes, you were silly and stupid. He is 20 years younger for a start, but now you pay the ultimate price for emotional betrayal of not only me, but for our children and future grandchildren. You shut your love off for me in the bedroom, and when I said about it, you said menopause BS. What you really wanted was to jump on top of Tom and have him F you or show you new things in the bedroom. All that laughter in the porch like a lovesick schoolgirl, I heard it all. She ran upstairs to the bedroom and cried for hours. Of course. I then took a week off from work the following week and she cried all the time, begging me to forgive her and all the normal BS. She was so sorry and would do anything BS. I'm just picturing upstairs her crying and crying. You know, like little kids when they cry and they're not getting their way and they cry, but they make sure you can hear it. That's what I'm picturing. I'm picturing upstairs oh, through the fucking door. I mean, it's, he was probably like at one point, like uh, Monty Python, and the Holy Grail, when the king was like, be quiet. I'm picturing the whole be quiet thing going out of him. She was looking in pain, but I lost all feelings by now. And I proceed with the divorce as planned. She quit her charity work, and after slapping Tom around in the face, after talking with his girlfriend and finding out they had no open relationship at all, and that Tom was just being his normal, flirtatious self, hoping to score on any woman who would fall for his BS. Well, I'm glad she actually went to the girlfriend. Hell hath no fury. She begged me many times, but I was resolute and told her time and time again she had already left me emotionally for months, and I no longer believed that she loved me as she once did. Her tears were never ending, but she knew I had lost all trust in her, and there was no going back to before. Again, the never-ending tears. Be quiet! Uh, one year on, and we are on our own. I still have the house and paid out half its value to the ex-wife. Luckily, I have some pension that I could cash in on and also invest in another small property that will pay rent and I can also sell later for some profit if needed. The ex-wife lives in a small flat with two bedrooms and she works six days a week to pay all the bills and expenses like electric, gas, internet, local yearly taxes, her mobile phone, and internet, etc. He says, yeah, welcome to the real world, I say. We now have a beautiful granddaughter, and although my son and daughter still don't speak to the ex-wife, she has also never seen the grandchild either. Although she did buy presents, and my, son, my son's wife says, but they are unwrapped under the stairs. Man, the kids took it tough too, huh? I've expressed that they should speak to their mother, as she was a great mum to both of them, but I can't say when that will be. That is up to them. Well, that says a lot about you, man, because believe me, the situation was reversed. No ex-wife would say, would encourage the kids to have a relationship with the father. So you're being pretty generous by encouraging them, look, she was a good mom to you, reestablish your relationship, you know, but they probably will in time. 
So to all the guys out there, I will say, even after 26 years of a loving marriage, never think your wife head can't be turned by some low life wanting to get in, get in her panties and charm her with laughter and jokes with suggestive desires. Open relationships are for people with, who no longer respect or truly love their partners. For me, my vows were never broken emotionally or physically. I love my wife, family, 100%. So, that is the end of his story. And, bro, that I'm sorry that happened to you, man. I mean, Jesus, that, that's the last thing you wanted, honestly. 26 years of marriage and that happened. But, yeah, it was over. End of story. And guaranteed, she would have been hooking up with good old Tom. And good old Tom eventually would have gotten bored with her and kicked her cougar ass to the curb. But now she can have Tom all she wants. But something tells me there's no Tom in the picture. And by the way, I even though you're divorced, I guarantee you still she's going to try to get back with you. Guaranteed. And if that's not what you want, then don't do it. But you're 52. But my man, your life ain't over yet. You got plenty of living to go. You know, and just enjoy enjoy your life, enjoy your new granddaughter, enjoy time with the kids, your hobbies, your interests, and just see where life takes you. And I'm glad the divorce went, well, much better than it could have gone. And I'm glad you're in the house. You obviously paid her for her half of, half of the house and everything like that. And I'm glad things are going well for you. But, you know, so guys, this dude handled it like a boss. He handled it just right. And I'm sure many of you guys will enjoy this story. And it goes to show you that you see if any suspicious behavior like this happens, you got to handle it right. And there's just no going back. And perfect example that 26 years that he thought he had a great thing going and look what happened. So always keep your eyes peeled, gentlemen. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. And let me know what you think. Uh, let this guy know what you think. Give him a shout out. Let him know that he did a good job. Let him know he made the right decision because, you know, it's, it'll be helpful for him to hear that. And if you got a really good story you want to share with me, definitely email me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just give me some time to get to when I will, when I can get the chance. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.